And now, ladies and gentlemen, the man we all know and love, Charles Buckley! Hello! This week on NBA Jam, we'll profile the man known as Sir Charles. Plus, Kenny Anderson heads home to Queens, New York. And Sonics coach George Carl takes us on a tour of Seattle. the career of one of the NBA's all-time greats, Charles Barkley. I started playing basketball when I was nine. Between my junior year and senior year in high school, I went from 5'10 to 6'4. And that was really when the big change came. Hello. I'm Charles Barkley. I love the way you walk. I love the way you talk. Get out of the way, little fella. Barkley broke into the NBA in 1984 with the Philadelphia 76ers. And in his rookie season, he had one important question on his mind. The only thing I was concerned about was should I call Dr. J, Dr. J, or Mr. Irving, or Julia. I knew basketball would take care of itself because at that time I had confidence in my ability. But it wasn't just his talent on the court that made Charles popular with the fans, it was also his unique personality. A, a different guy. The word entertainer puts Charles behind. One career highlight came in 1992 with the Dream Team in Barcelona. It was like traveling with, the, the, I guess, the Beatles. You know, that stuff you see on TV where there's thousands and thousands of people waiting all the time. It was unbelievable. I'm in the Olympics. I wanted to, to see it. Sometimes I dream that he is me. I just want to be like Chuck. I mean, my See, the dream team's in a class of their own. I think there was never really any doubt we were going to win the gold medal. We took the gold medal for granted. But the whole Olympic experience was just fun for me. He carried that winning attitude with him to Phoenix, where in 1993, he led the Suns on a ride all the way to the NBA Finals. It was just an unbelievable feeling. It's just fun when you win. It's that simple. That year, Barkley was simply spectacular, and he earned his greatest individual honor. Charles Barkley, the 1992-93 National Basketball Association most valuable player. Congratulations. You know, it was like unbelievable. I think that brought me to the, to the forefront. Man, it just kind of all just like boom. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the man we all know and love, Charles Buckley. Check this out. Dreams come true in my new shoe. That's not what I want to say. I've been to Germany, Italy, Spain, France, uh, and it's, uh, Japan. And it's unbelievable how popular you are in those countries. Last season, he arrived at a new destination, Houston, as he was traded to the Rockets. You know, I'm just glad to be in a situation where a team wants me, and I'm looking forward to it. I think we'll have a good team. Yeah. Hey, how's it feel with it? <laughs> it feels pretty good. Charles is having a great time in Houston, where he has a chance to win his first NBA title. And with teammates like Clyde Drexler and Akeem Olajuwon, Barkley feels this could finally be his year. That's the only thing that drives me is the opportunity to win the World Championship. I think if we're going to win it, we got to have to going to have to win it this year. Five seconds left. Somebody got to be the hero. Might as well be me. Four, three. Barkley says, "I want to hit another three. Oh, oh my goodness! Charles! That's it. Simple.
With Christmas time upon us, NBA players are doing their part to spread some holiday cheer, as you'll see in this edition of Total NBA. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey! In Los Angeles, homeless girls and boys were treated to a holiday party by members of the Lakers. This is a one of a kind. You know, I got all the time in the world. You know, just came out of practice, so I got a lot of time to give. So why not share with those who are less fortunate? Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's the best part. Man. Hi, guys. Fans in Vancouver traded toys for autographs in order to meet some of their favorite Grizzlies. A lot of kids are not as fortunate as, you know, some of, some of our kids. Um, it gives, you know, kids a chance to get toys on Christmas. It's, uh, it's great for our players to spend time and interact with the kids, especially around Christmas time, because Christmas is for the kids. Come on. Bells, jingle bells, jingle oh. all the way. <laughs> Antoine Carr serenaded the kids at a Salt Lake City hospital when the Jazz came to visit. You realize how fortunate you are that your child has his or her health. You also ask God to look out for these kids and their parents and their family to uh, have a good Christmas and a good life. The Magic went on their annual holiday caravan, visiting hospitals and community centers. So I want to sit around and I want to try to get to know that particular child and try to make them smile. You know, that's what Christmas and giving is all about. You know who's all here today? The New Jersey Nets. We come to kick all you guys into the Christmas spirit, man. The Nets showed their holiday cheer by singing along with kids at a local hospital. The reason for the holiday season was giving and, you know, to be able to come down to a hospital and, and, and make a few kids happy these lots of On the court, Orlando's Daryl Armstrong gave his teammates a gift with this incredible play. Daryl Armstrong dies, saves the Harper. Do you yeah. believe that? The Pacers' Rick Smith provided his own stocking Rick stuffer. with a driving oh, oh, And Jason Kidd gift-wrapped this pass for a special delivery to Antonio McDice. And it comes to McDice. Oh, my! What a play! An assist from Kidd to McDice. That's it for Total NBA. But don't go away. We'll be back in just a moment. Shop locker who's coming to home in Dallas. Here's Maverick Center Sean Bradley in NBA Shorts. Hi, my name is Sean Bradley and I play center for the Dallas Mavericks. Here come the Mavs. Sean Bradley. Again, Bradley. All right, big fella. I don't want to change my height for anything. I love being 7'6". It's funny because I was telling someone the other day, they said, well, when did you get to be 7'6"? I said, well... I got to be 7'6 between my junior and senior year in high school when I was 17 years old. I said, you mean you stopped growing when you were 17? I thought, you know, I feel ripped off. Most people grow to their 21. <laughs> I'm happy with it, though. Baker operating now against Bradley. Baker goes to the hoop. Bradley a block. Baker again. And Bradley caused him to shoot that one awkwardly. Oh, I love blocking shots. I, I do. Blocked away by Bradley. He's there. I'd rather block it and get it so that we can get it back. But every once in a while, you know, you do get a one that goes out to the third or fourth row, and that uh, makes you feel pretty good. You should pumped up. With the left hand, the big guy. My favorite thing is to block a shot, grab the rebound, kick it out to my point guard, and have him hit a cutting guard going to the basket and have a dunk on the other end. I think that's one of the most exciting things for me. Mavericks on the move. Here's Finley strong in the hoop and a hammer. As a shot blocker, I can see in a player's eyes when he thinks I'm going to block it. What a presence by Sean Bradley. There was one block, I think on Sharif, where I had him far enough under the basket. All I had to do was put my hands up. I didn't have to move at all. Shot it right into my hand and pinned it against the backboard. Another time, I remember Stark stroke baseline and was doing one of his patented baseline dunks. And I just happened to barely reach my hand across and, and cup the ball. And uh, that was kind of a fun one. But I blocked so many, it's hard to remember them all. <laughs> hey, hit it! Sean Bradley interview, take four. Here's Bradley, spins baseline. Oh, nice Come move. On. I'll pot that shot. My style of play would be more finesse. Someone that can run the floor unlike most 7-6 people. 
Hey, Bradley jumps out and knocks it loose. Check this out, Sean Bradley. Every now and then when I've got someone on me that I know I can face up and take to the basket, I don't, I don't mind doing that once in a while. The two centers going toe to toe. Sean Bradley. Wow. As long as I can continue to improve, that's what my goal is. I need to score more and rebound more and stay consistent with the block shots and anchoring the defense. By doing that, then that's when we're talking about being a cornerstone for building a franchise into a winning organization. Next, we go on the scene with Portland Trailblazer star Kevin Anderson as he returns to his old neighborhood in New York City. Hi, I'm Kenny Anderson, and you're on the scene. I'm coming from Queens, from Left Rack. Left Rack City, the home, you know, where it all started at for me, where I put it down, ball between the legs, behind the back, all that. Apartment 4J. And Mom, dudes, I usually get moved on camera to go to Project with. Yo, yo, my mom, mom. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's so old out the window type thing right there. Oh, door, boy. That's like I had to go project on the markers. Oh, you didn't say no projects, boy. That's my mom, oh, so my you know. God. Oh, my is, yo, this is the room. This is the little tight room. My mom's took the bed out. Ain't no bed in here, no more. Some real famous people that came in this apartment when I was getting recruited. You know, Dean Smith was up in here. Jim Bayhaw, Bobby Crummins. But my trophy's still here. See, that's what, you know, that's what make a trophy, you know what I'm saying? They've had it for a long time, the cobwebs, the dust on there, that ain't there, you know? <laughs> he plays with fun, he likes the game. He had, it seemed like he had more fun playing it than he did before, you know, and then that made me feel better. Thank you for coming. It was a pleasure. I'm gonna go get a, I'm gonna try, you know, I'm gonna go get a slice. Vinny's Pizza. Um, give me a slice. Yep, slice it up. Well, this is by far the best pizza in town. As far as I can say, the neighborhood without him is lost. You know what I mean? The kids, the games, the summer classics. Forget it. Be the man. Yo, what's up? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? These are old timers, man. They've been here. They do their thing, man. These supposed to be the black, black proud people of the neighborhood. Kenny Anderson, they got me in my old young, my young days with New Jersey Nets. It's a good picture though, sorry. It'll do, it'll do. This kid here, you know what his name is? <laughs> Mr. Chips. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's his name, Mr. Chips. Yeah. Mr. Chips. Yeah. That's, his, that's what his mama called him. Yeah, Mr. Chips. And he's a good person. Yeah, he's a beautiful young, young man. man. So I learned how to handle the ball out at night. Dark, you know, just between the legs, you know, little stuff like that. This is where it started a little bit. When I was putting, when I tried to go over to the courts over there, these big guys used to throw my ball over the fence. They ain't let me play. I used to come over here and do it, doing what they're doing, shooting hoops in here, dunking and all that, doing the same thing. It's wonderful that he comes back to his town to take time and support our children. We really need that in this time. All our children, we need a hero. Right on, Kenny. These are all the kids that participate in the tournament, you know, every year. They, you know, this is why I do it. Left Frack City is my community, and uh, I just, you know, I think the world about it, knowing that, you know, they have a, a player in an NBA from Queens, from Left Frack, and, you know, whatever advice I can give their kids or, you know, uh, talk to them about, you know, different experiences I, I went through in the NBA or just in life in general, you know, I'm willing to do that. There's much more to come on NBA Jam, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Soaring is just a feeling that, you know, you're flying for that minute, and you're just up there, and for a split second, it sometimes feels like you're in slow motion. When I really feel it and I really get a good lift, you know, sometimes I can see the rim to the side of me, and once you're up there, you just you just throw it down. Oh, man. Simple as that. This week, we head to Seattle, where the coach of the Sonics, George Carl, takes us on an NBA tour. Hey everybody, I'm George Carl, head coach of the Seattle Super Sonics. Go out there and be big! Go, 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 I want to welcome you to the city of Seattle.
Okay, we're rolling. Seattle, Washington. It's the 22nd largest city in America. I've been here now seven years. A lot of basketball games have been played here. It's by far the greatest, best city I've ever lived in. You got a lot of touristy stuff. You got Pike's Place Market, where 40,000 people a day usually go to the market and hang out. A lot of things to do there. There's always the arts. You got the art museums, opera, symphony. Of course, you got the Space Needle that was built 20 some years ago for the World's Fair. It's an alive city. It has a lot of music, jazz, comedy. The people are very independent. They have a lot of things to do. And fortunately, they're good sports fans. In the NBA, there's two things that don't happen very often, a day off and a day with the family. So today, I got a good day off, a fun day off, and I'm going to go spend it with my daughter at Seattle Pacific University. Basketball consumes your, your winter time, and, and most successful people in basketball are possessed and give their lives to the game. And the passion to the game almost demands that you are consumed by this game. And unfortunately, you, you miss out on the family. You miss out on being a parent. Fortunately, she's only about five minutes away. Kelsey, you come get us. We're up top. Bye. Kelsey. <laughs> Can I have a hug? Nine days, you miss me? Good answer. Yeah, thank you. Well, college is the greatest four years of your life. And uh, I think Kelsey's already shown that in the two months that she's been away from home. She's been home about twice. This is really messy, sister. I told you it was messy. That was my great, the greatest four years of my life. Your printer is this good? This is a better printer than I have in my office. You learn about yourself, you have independence. It's a basically the foundation of what you are and what you are going to become. This is my favorite little girl. Mmm, little girl. <laughs> okay, you going to come by the house later? Yeah. Okay, I'll see you. Bye. Love you. Well, here we got some sunshine finally. A day in Seattle usually starts with clouds, and then some rain, and now you're happy you got some sunshine. It's time for me to head on out. I hope you enjoyed Seattle. It's my town. It's a great town. If you come see us, come see the Sonics play, and look us up. Take care. Coming up in our Jam of the Week, we'll feature the greatest NBA players of all time. Talk about focus and intensity. Send it home. And we'll profile Lindsey Hunter, who's emerged as a young star for the Detroit Pistons. I'm very confident in, in my abilities, and, and I work very hard at what I do. In our Jam of the Week, we salute the NBA's 50 greatest players. Here's Olia with Hot Like Fire.
back with more of NBA Jam right after this. Now in its fifth season, guard Lindsey Hunter has been a driving force for the Pistons, and here's a closer look at Detroit's young star. You got the ability to do this and, and don't hold back. Don't let people harness your game or whatever. Uh, you should always, you know, do what you can do. And then and, and that'll bring out everything in you. So uh, I try not to, you know, be reluctant to do anything on the court. I try to be comfortable and relax and, and everything. And, and that's worked out for me, I think. I never surprise myself, I think. Uh, sometimes on the court I do, but as far as uh, what I can do, I'm, I'm very confident in, in my abilities and, and I work very hard at what I do. So, you know, I have higher expectations for, of myself than others, so, you know, it, the things I do, I, I think I think it's just normal. You know, I expect to do more. I give uh, my parents all the credit because without a solid foundation, you know what, I, I wouldn't be here. Without my dad pushing me the way he did, without my mom being there for me, you know, when through all times, I, I wouldn't be here. So I think, um, I hold my, my parents responsible for all of that. He, he felt like he could make it. Yeah. He really felt like he could make it. and Because uh, he never thought Lynn was really that I good. knew that he could play in college ball. <laughs> uh, I knew that he could play. Now, when I thought he had a chance was his uh, uh, junior year in, uh, in college. I said, oh. And, uh, and he just kept improvements. And, I mean, like every year he would, you know, go up another notch. That's when I said, oh, son, you keep improving like that, you know, the sky's the limit. TikTok, this is how we do it. TikTok, get stop. Watch the pick and roll. Here you go, here you go. Good pass, look at that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I taught him how to do that. I taught him how to pass. It is great for him to be my brother. It, it didn't matter if he was in the NBA or not. <laughs> yeah. Well, who is though? That's NBA rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why I'm the bigger brother than you're the little brother. I'm here to instruct you, son. I don't think I'll ever just be satisfied with, with the success I have achieved so far. I want to go as far as my body will take me or as far as my skills will take me. And, and hopefully that's a long ways, but I'll work and work and, until I can just really achieve everything I want, I ever dreamed of. You know, And I think when guys get caught up in, in what they have done and, and stop working, you know, that really sets you back. And that's one thing I'll concentrate on is continue to work hard and keep that work ethic going for me because that's one thing that you can't replace. That's it for this week's